Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Lindsay and I'm your moderator for today's webinar. Today's webinar is Everything CK12. As you can tell from the title, we have a lot of topics to cover. To get us started, I'm gonna talk you through a few logistics on using the Zoom platform. Then I'm gonna give you a short overview of the CK12 Foundation before introducing you to Katie. Katie is a member of the CK12 team who will take you step-by-step -step through CK12's resources while pausing periodically to answer any questions you might have. Today we're using Zoom software for our webinar. You should see two different options on your screen, one that says Q&A and one that says chat. As you have questions, please post them in the Q&A window within Zoom. Like I said, Katie will pause for a Q&A session after each major topic. The chat window is a great place to build community. There you are free to introduce yourself. If you're an educator, you can share your district or what subject you teach. Just make sure that you are sending any general posts to everyone and not just to CK12 or the panelists. While we don't anticipate any technical issues during our broadcast, if you're having any trouble with your video or your sound, feel free to let us know in the Q&A or the chat window. Now that we've gone over the logistics for this webinar, let's introduce you to the CK12 Foundation. The CK12 Foundation, founded in 2007, is a leading nonprofit organization dedicated to improving student learning by increasing access to educational materials through the Flexbook platform and concept-based modalities. CK12 offers free, high-quality, standards-aligned, open content through an integrated set of tools for learning, including digital textbooks, concept-based learning resources, simulations, interactive practice, and more. And we give it all away for free. Our core content and curriculum is for middle school and high school math and science, with some K-5 through math practice and videos. However, with the addition of donated resources and user-created content, you'll also be able to find books for other subjects and levels, especially related to social studies and English. Believe it or not, this website is run by a small team of about 35 people in Palo Alto, California, with a few colleagues working outside of California in our India office. We love what we do and are thrilled to give people all over the world access to quality content and resources. Now, let me introduce you to one of these team members, Katie, who will help you explore what CK12 has for you. Thanks, Lindsay, for that introduction to CK12, and thanks to everyone who joined us today. Um, so, I'm going to be covering a couple general areas in three sections in this webinar. So, the first of those sections is what we call concept based learning. So, really, those bite sized chunks of content. Um, supported with modalities, and we'll be talking about how to find these resources on our site. The next section of today's webinar is going to be on customizing content. So whether this is at the full book or the lesson level, um, and we'll show you how quick and easy it is to really just get your own version up and running and use it with your students and your school. Um, and then you can even see others' content that you could start with as a place to start customizing. The last section of today's webinar is gonna be on assignments. And this is creating assignments, seeing student progress, and doing that within CK12 or through various learning management systems that we've integrated with so far. So I know some of you probably came here to just customize a textbook and that's really all you're concerned about. So we'll show you how simple it is to find a resource, make a few changes, and then use that URL and share it um, with your students right away. So super simple option, but we want to show you kind of where to find those resources first. Others, on the other hand, might have come to find content to supplement their curriculum. And so maybe that's a practice or an interactive that they want to use with their students. Um, and so we want to show them the full suite of resources that CK12 offers and guide you through more than just Flexbooks so that you can see what resources and tools you might want to use in your class. Now, as Lindsay mentioned, after each of these sections, we're gonna pause to answer questions. So feel free to start using that Q&A feature and ask away, and we'll either integrate them right in there or we'll answer them you know, at the end of each part within this section. So if you look at CK12's homepage, 
you can see really how we wanted to address the fact that students learn in many different ways. Some of them read text, some of them want to practice, they want to learn through modalities such as interactives like our simulations and flicks, or a practice. And so our move to concept-based learning hopefully gives you the tools to meet your students' needs in the best way possible for them. Now, in order to access these tools, we're going to cover the different ways to find them based on your goal. So the first of them is, say you're trying to teach a lesson tomorrow for a single resource or a topic. So how to find and search for content like that on our site. The next option is if you wanted to explore a unit or a branch and kind of create multiple lessons in a row and what that might look like. After that, we'll talk about using a Flexbook and finding Flexbooks on our site and the best one to use as your curriculum to replace your content. And finally, in this section, we'll talk about standards aligned content and how you might be able to find content on our site that matches the Common Core or Next Generation Science standards. So in order to do that, we want to talk about, you know, and however you're searching in here, the different modalities that you might see on CK12. So we'll talk about our core modalities. The first of them is what we call our reads. And this is whether it's part of a full textbook and it's a single lesson within there, or it's a standalone read that explains a topic and might include practice or embedded content as well. The next two are our simulations and our plics. And these are our two interactive components. We have physics simulations um, that are more of a system working together. And then our plics are really just a simple interaction that students can use to explore a concept. We have videos that you might see as standalone videos or embedded within our reads. We have assessments in our practice tool. And then we have our real world applications. And you'll see other modalities such as study guides or you know, lesson plans here and there, but these are some core ones that will help you really work with students on concept-based learning. So with that idea, I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna actually jump right onto our, um, right onto, sorry, onto our site and show you the different options that we have from there. So let me share my screen. And I'm gonna pull up our part. Let's say we're working on a content with heat, temperature, and thermal energy transfer. And so this is a great way to look at what you might wanna see in terms of the different modalities. So if we go into our read, you'll see that our reads start with an explanation of the content. So in this case, there's a description, there's some vocabulary included. As you go down, you might see some examples on how to solve a problem, a summary, and then review questions for a student to work on. And you might even see embedded video in this resource. Now, you'll see embedded video within the read, but as I mentioned, you might also see, if we go up here and we click on this, the videos that are for the whole content. And notice there was one video in here, but here are some other options for students to learn with. From that video, I can really talk about the different ways that our content is applied to the real world. And so one of those options might be to click on our real world applications. And in here, there are a number of ways that heat and temperature relate to the real world, not surprisingly. And so a student could go in and look at that as another resource. The applications also show up in our simulations and our plics. So if we open this simulation, this one's on a hot oven, all of our simulations start with some question that introduces the concept. In this case, why does the metal in the oven burn you, but the air doesn't? And if I play this little introduction, it'll start talking about different pieces that work from there. And then I can move forward and skip this component and go into what we call our sandbox environment. And in our sandbox environment, there are different options to adjust. And this is a fairly simple simulation. So you'll see I can adjust the temperature and turn the oven on or off. And here you'll see the molecules move around, both in the air and within the pan at the bottom. I can continue to explore this by looking at different questions. And these questions will actually bump you back to that piece, and I'll be able to adjust and try to submit an answer for that piece. Now, if I'm just guessing, I could try again or I could exit from there. You might also see what we call our community contributed tab. And here's a great place for you if you have suggestions for questions that could be added to this, and you can add them into that component. The last part of a simulation is kind of the similar examples. 
And so here, how cold is outer space? If I click on that, I could open it up. And it gives me a little bit of an example on maybe another place that I would work with. I could see the other examples, or I could go back to where I was. And those are all options. And actually, let me go back into that sim for one more second. And if I go back to the top, once I'm in there, you can see this option to assign the class. And we'll be talking about that more in the last section of here when we talk about assessments. Now, if I go back to my page, I could actually click on Plix as well. And our Plix is another form of interactives. And while we have simulations for physics, our Plix are across our math and science content. And all of our Plix start with a description of what's happening. In this case, it's talking about kinetic molecular theory, and it kind of tells you how to interact with that particular Plix. I can make some interactions, see what's happening to water vapor versus solid ice. And then I can start answering questions. If I just start randomly guessing, it will help me by seeing the correct answer. I could you know, see if this works out. And here's a good example of a drag and drop where I'm actually categorizing different components. So um, probably should read this as I go through, but let's see what happens. Um, and so the questions within a Plix should go from a basic concept that just kind of says, do you understand the gist? And then goes further and applies it to get at higher level thinking, like analysis and application. And know that for our simulations and our plicks, while you can assign them to class, they're not really an assessment tool. They're really a chance to explore a concept and gain a deeper understanding of that concept. And so know that when you're assigning it, you're assigning for that, just like a reader a video, as something for a student to go through and gain a deeper understanding rather than to assess the work that they're doing. If instead you actually wanted to assess the content, you could go back into here and you could click on this component and you could see the adaptive practice. And just to give you an overview of what adaptive practice is, you'll see different pieces in here. Oh, sorry, it looks like I lost my screen. So let me share that one more time. Um, now you can see the practice page. Um, so you'll see kind of, this is a little overview on the adaptive practice system. Um, you can try to get a bunch correct. It tells you and adjusts from easy to medium and hard and maybe gives you some recommendations. And we'll, as I said, go through that some more. But you can go into any of the assessment on the particular page and just click preview from a teacher page to see the questions that are involved in that particular topic. Um, so know that that's kind of the breadth of resources that you might see there. And so now let's talk about finding and accessing these resources. So I'm just going to take this page and I'm going to go back to our homepage, ck12.org. I can X out of that practice component. And let's start with that first thing. I'm a teacher. I know I'm teaching a topic on rocks in my science class tomorrow, and I have no idea what new fun um, resource or interaction I might be able to include in there. So I can search for rocks on this site. And that search bar is on our homepage as well as in the top right of our, most of our standard pages. You'll see here the option to filter. So I can filter based on the grade I'm working with, my subjects, and different types of modalities. You know, as you notice, you'll see the same ones like the real world application and assessments and our clicks here. Or I can just jump right into the concept on the rock cycle from Earth Science. Once I'm in here, I have the same options. And this has an additional one on study aids which might be a great just quick overview for students before a particular quiz or something like that to go through. Now, that works really well if you're looking for STEM content, which is what we primarily offer. But what if you're an English teacher and you wanna teach a unit on literature? So if I did the same thing and I search for literature on our site, you'll see CK12 has a couple of options, but there's not really a lot of core content on literature that we offer because most of the content we created was for STEM subjects. However, if you click on the Community Contributed tab in a search, you'll start seeing the options for content that other users have created and published to our site under our license for you guys to be able to use. And so you could go through and you could skim it, or you could just sort. In this case, you can see there's a read, a couple real-world applications and web links, and a video. But if I was going to pull down the textbooks, there's a couple different textbooks on literature that might be a great place for me to start. And I can go in there and say, okay, there's theme, character, and even an essay to work off of. 
Now, this leads into that idea of a larger unit, such as a character um, or theme. And what would that happen if I was going to do, sorry, what would happen if I was going to do that for a math or science branch? So if I go back to the homepage, and this little green logo in the top, or green and orange logo, will get you back to our homepage. And I can scroll down. So let's say I was teaching physics. Now you'll see in this option, here are those study guides I mentioned, the simulations because we're in physics, and our plics, along with all of those concepts or bite-sized units within our content. And I can click on any one of these and it would take me to that page. So if I was doing a unit on, let's say, Newton's laws, I could go into any one of these and open up that unit and pull all of my resources for that content to include. And I could even share some of that content, which we'll go through later on when we talk about assignments. So know that I can kind of create that option. And that same list of concepts you can find by doing this drop down here. And you can see where it might fit into a unit that you're creating with multiple concepts put together. Now, instead of doing a smaller unit or just a single lesson, if I wanted to do a whole course and I wanted to replace my entire curriculum with what we have, I could pick a branch, let's say algebra in this case, and go into the textbooks option on there. Now, you'll see right now I'm looking at the options for middle school. So from here, I have some explorations books, a basic and an algebra concepts book, and my middle school books for different topics. Now, one thing you should know, the difference between kind of our original book, in this case, you see both of the basic books, but our original book and our concepts book is that you'll find longer lessons with multiple skills in our original books. And what we did is we took those and we broke those lessons into those bite-sized chunks or concepts for our concept books. And in that case, every single one of those lessons correlates to the, directly to that concept with all of the other resources, where you might have to see a couple of different concepts in order to get the practice and the matching videos that would go in a, more of our standard book that we started with. The other thing you should know, you know, I can switch to high school. You could sort by levels. Let's say you have a student who needed more, a more basic version or an advanced version if they were in an honors class. And you can even filter by language or simply scroll down to see the translated versions that we have in Spanish for our content. From there, we'll talk in the next section about how you can quickly customize it, but that's a great way to find your Flexbooks. Now, if I'm in a teacher account, I can go back to the homepage and I can also search by standards. Now, if I was in a student version, so just be aware that the student version, instead of, we'll have the study guides here, and it won't have anything that has to do with standards because I have yet to meet a student who cares what letter combination a standard is for the class that they're taking that day. So we kept that for the teacher version of our site. Now, if I click on that standards browser, I can explore the concepts that are related to any particular standard. So if I was teaching geometry, I could go in and you can see for this first one on congruence, I have different concepts that all have components of congruence in it. For here, let's say, you know, we're talking about describing rotations and reflections. So if that's the standard I'm trying to hit, I can click on this concept and it will take me out to that concept page. And here I'll see my reads, videos, practice, and the plics that goes with it. So that's a great way to find content related to standards if that's the component that you're trying to hit as you go through. That was a lot of information. Um, why don't we pause there for a few minutes, Katie, and um, take some questions. So if any of you have some questions, um, go ahead and post them in the Q&A. Um, Katie, we have Dr. Bell joining us from Hamilton, New Jersey. And he said that he teaches chemistry, all levels of chemistry, including advanced placement chemistry and biology. And he had two questions. The first one was, are there more flexbooks on the horizon, such as in molecular biology or AP physics? Well, that's a good question. Um, we're currently working on a set of college level text as a pilot program. And so those are the ones that I know are gonna be coming out um, at some point soon. I don't know of any books that are specifically on their horizon for CK-12, but what I recommend is searching for, let's say, molecular biology here um, and seeing 
what components and what books users might have created if you're looking for one specific to that piece. Um, and so if I click on that community contributed tab, and then I filter by Flexbooks, let's see what our options are. So if you look here, you can see this particular user has created a book on molecular biology. Um, you might see some life science books. And so that's a great way to look. And you know, the community contributed tab is something that we don't curate. We curate the CK12 content. Um, there are about 150,000 variations of our textbooks on our site, some of which are published and some of which are not. Um, and so for that team of 30 that Lindsay talked about, we really, um, that's not something that we can do. Um, so what we try to do is we try to keep our content updated and include new pieces, but we wanted to allow you to see all of this other amazing work that users are doing. So I would check there as a great place to start. Um, otherwise, we can talk about, you know, how in the next section, how you might edit some of our content to hit a book that you were looking for, for AP Physics or something like that. Um, it looks like you asked another question. Yeah, the second question was about um, what platform might be best for accessing CK12. He's asking, um, is, is there any advantage to using Firefox over Chrome or Explorer or um, a Windows series such as 7 or 10? Do you know if there are any recommendations? Yeah, so CK12 has really worked to make our content accessible across devices. Um, one of our, you know, our mission is really to just get content that's needed and resources that are needed into the hands of anyone. And so we've created it where you'll see when we talk about apps that it's available on both Android and iOS devices. Um, you should be able to access our content on any browser, Safari, Chrome, Firefox, Explorer. Um, know that some older browsers, if you're you know, using a really, really old version of Explorer that might not be as up to date that you might wanna update your browser or something like that. Um, Chrome works pretty well. I worked with a Chromebook for two years at this job before I switched over to a computer and I was totally able to do whatever I needed to on our site on that Chromebook. Um, so the Chrome browser is definitely an option. Um, and that should be accessible, you know, across devices. And so I would say whatever you have available and whatever you guys are comfortable with, you should be able to use it. If you're seeing any issues, feel free to let us know. Um, and we can work with you to see if you just need to update something that will help from there. Um, so those are those two questions. I know a couple other questions that often come up. Um, our finding content based on standards, which we talked about. You could also use our standards browser on our homepage, which I know some people like, um, but know that you'll find content based on, you know, if I use this for Common Core and picked a subject, that I might find content, let's say, you know, analysis or something like that. I might find content for a number of different top books that would have content based on analysis that hit some of our common core. So just know that that's an option to look at for different pieces. And if you don't find one that's specifically aligned to your state, we'll talk more about schools that maybe are creating content more aligned to your updated standards because states constantly update their standards. Um, and you, know, you can customize your book to fit that piece. Katie, we just got a question. I think it's gonna be a great transition into our next section because the next question is how do users create a Flexbook? So why don't um, I get a setup for that? Uh, this next section is about customizing content exactly on that topic. Um, we're gonna cover, um, we're gonna cover, First of all, our license. Um, it's really important that we're license compliant. So we're the CC BYNC license, which is a non-commercial attribution license that allows you to customize content on our platform. Um, Katie's gonna show you next how to edit a Flexbook on our system or create one from scratch. So that'll help um, our viewer who had that question. And then Katie's also gonna show you how to customize content that has been submitted by other users. So I'll let you get started with that. Great. So the first thing I wanna talk about is our Creative Commons license. Um, and I know that teachers are innovators, and so let me just mute one of us so that there's no issue there. And that way you're not hearing any feedback, so sorry about that. 
Um, so if you're looking at our Creative Commons license, um, we're licensed under CC BY NC 3.0. And basically what that means is that as long as you attribute our content and are using it for non-commercial uses, you are welcome to customize that and adapt it to meet your needs. Um, and so we know that, you know, you tell your content. I know when I taught in a class for a number of years, I never taught from cover to cover. There are always sections I enhanced or added resources to. Um, and so we're going to kind of use this section to talk about that customization. And we built a platform to allow for that because we really wanted to meet your needs at the school level, at the teacher level, at the class level, whatever that was. Um, and so I'm going to switch over to our course site um, so that you can see what that might look like. So once again, I am on our homepage. You can see, you know, you can continue to search for content. So we can edit content at the level of the whole book or all the way down to the level of a read or a lesson within there. Um, so if I was gonna teach a section on trigonometry, I could go to that page. I could click on my Flexbook textbook and you'd see the different options for trigonometry. Let's just say I'm only teaching a section on trig. So I'm gonna click on that book and you'll see on the left this option to customize. And so if I click customize here, what it will do is it will take that book and add it to my library. Now I can change the title. I can say for a fall demo or for my school or whatever that looks like. So that's option number one. I can do that and I could save this book and it would save the textbook. And then I could use that URL at the top right up here and share that with anyone. So you, that, that could just be your whole customization. You just renamed it for your school, you have one to work with, and that's your starting place. And then over time, you could go in it and you could continue to edit it and enhance it. So by clicking on edit, I'm brought back into the table of contents. Now I renamed the whole book, but I could edit any of the chapter level content, whether, whether that's the information, details, summary, or I could expand this content and you could see the sections within that particular chapter. Now I can reorder either the whole chapter or any of these sections. So let's say I wanted to talk about determining distance before classifying triangles. I could switch those two and teach the other one first and it renumbers it and it's all set to go. I can delete it. Let's say maybe I'm gonna include this idea of classifying triangles within the distance piece and I'm just gonna do something on determining Pythagorean theorem. I can remove that section or if you accidentally click that, I could cancel it and leave that content in there. And just one note, if I want to move a section from one chapter into the next chapter, then what I would want to do is expand both chapters and then drag from one chapter into the other to make that easier to work with. So know those are your options for simple renaming, reordering, deleting. The next option is to add content. So let's say I wanted to add some content on geometry. So I'm going to add a new chapter. And this is going to be Geometry Basics and I can save that chapter. And it's gonna show up at the bottom, but I'm probably gonna teach that before trig, so maybe I'll move that to the top, and then I can add content within there. So I could also add a particular modality by searching CK12 or by writing my own, or even uploading a Word or a Google Doc. Know if you're uploading content that editors are kind of different across different systems, so just you may need to kind of do a little bit of reformatting, but you can get all of your core content up into there by uploading those per section. So you can't upload a Google Doc with your whole book in it because it'll become a single read. Um, but if you're gonna search CK12, let's say I wanted to do something on the Pythagorean theorem because I really wanted more on that. My students were struggling. I could search that content and then I could go in and I could pick this concept I could just sort by flexbook textbooks and see if there's any in there. And then regardless of what it is, I could add the entire geometry book or any piece that I wanted in here. So once I add to flexbook textbook, oop, I should select one, I could add this piece. And it would add that entire textbook with all of the chapters into this to the end of this particular piece. So that's an option for adding content. Now, if I was just browsing CK12, so let me say I was on a different page, I was looking at this great read on the Pythagorean theorem, and on the left, you'll see this option to add to a Flexbook textbook. 
Now notice, I have a couple of different books within my library, so I could add it to the one that I'm working on, or I could even create a new Flexbook textbook to start with. Now, if I did this right now, and I had a tab open already with that book, it's not gonna be updated. Because if I did this and I added it, and then I went back in here, and I clicked save right now before anything's been added or refreshed, it would save the current version I'm looking at. So best practice and a warning is that I would recommend saving your work and exploring in two separate actions, not in different tabs all at the same time where you might accidentally save a version that doesn't have all of the current content in there. So just something to be aware of. Now, let's say I wanna go in and I wanna edit a particular topic. So if I go in here and I'm gonna look at graphs of trigonometric functions, length of a chord, I can go in and I can edit all the way down to the level of this read. So it's gonna save that textbook. We're gonna open up this read and you're gonna start seeing options for, and I just added a whole bunch of extra chapters, so it's taking a second to kind of add those components in. But length of a chord. I can change my title or leave it as is. And then I'm brought into our editor for that content. And just like you would see in any word editor, whether docs or word or you know something like that, you'll see your standard options that include your basic you know, bold, italics, highlighting, uh, linking. You'll see all these right here. I can sub and superscript. I can change the text color, all of those things. Add bulleted lists. A couple specific ones that might be useful for you. One, I can insert an image. You can choose a file, upload it, and then just make sure because our license is an attribution license, that if you're adding content in there that you have the full rights to use those images, and then you put the source in credit. So if there's a URL for it, or who the photographer or you know, artist or whatever that is as you upload that. I can also click in any regular section, and I can insert media. So I could pull an embed code from a YouTube video and embed that there and then see what's happening there. I could go through and I could embed practice, which I'll show you where to pull that embed code from. And this element box is fantastic. So this will pull in a box if I wanted to say, you know, the general formula for a chord, and then I could type that component in. And in here, I could use our math editor to write the formula for a chord. And this editor allows you to, if you're adding a new one in, I can use our drag and drop options up here, insert different pieces, and then preview what that looks like before adding it in. All right, Katie, so before we overwhelm everybody with all of the different editing options, I wanna go back to what you said earlier about those folks who are just coming to the site and looking for a digital textbook, maybe you don't have a whole lot of time to make a ton of edits or customization, and they're gonna trust our content. Um, you just kind of want to reiterate again that, that all these are extra steps. Yeah, and so as I said at that first piece where, you know, I can keep this as a draft so I can keep working on it later, I, I can just rename it and save it and use that URL. And let's actually share this right now. So if I do this with the share me option, I'll show you what this looks like. I can share this in an email. I can share it on social media. I can even share it in Google Classroom, which we'll talk about. But that's, you know, I made two second changes and added a shell of a chapter in here. And I, I can share that. I'm good to go if I wanted to use that as is. Um, so kind of those extra pieces where if I wanted to include images or videos or practice or anything else, that's an option for those of you that want to do so. But you could use our content without even customizing it with your name. Or you could use it with a couple simple basic, I'm going to delete this section that I'm not using. You know, I would have loved to have deleted like the last three chapters in my textbook so that my kids didn't have to carry around three extra chapters that they weren't going to get to that year. Um, and so this is a way to do that as you go through. So thanks for the reminder, Lindsay. Hopefully, you know, I was showing a couple quick options if you wanted to go through, but it really is that simple to just kind of change it and share it from that point. And then I think a helpful hint is going to be, I don't know if you're planning on showing them the schools page. Uh, that's a great place to go to already to find out what's going on in your area and other districts. I think that would shortcut some of the, you know, overwhelmingness to somebody if, if they're not wanting to create something by scratch. Great. Um, yeah, so as I said, you know, especially if you're looking for some of those other options, um, if we don't have a book that specifically fits your needs, if you go back to this homepage on that teacher version, 
um, and you scroll down to the schools option. So I showed you, you know, in search, you could click on the community contributed tab, but from our homepage, you can also click on that schools option. And so from there, if I went down to, let's say I was teaching in Tennessee. So I'm gonna pull up the schools from Tennessee. There, you know, there's a pre-calc book, a math one book. This is an integrated approach. So that might be an interesting place to start. Um, and you'll even see schools and districts where they've kind of redone a lot of their curriculum. So here's an example for Tullahoma City where they actually created social studies books and then republished them to our site under our license. And you are welcome to take those. And if I open any one of these, whether social studies or some of their English language arts that they just did, which are further down, you know, any of those books, I can open them and I can quickly click customize on the left side and, you know, change a couple of things. And then I have my own version of my English language arts book. Um, and so that's an option if you don't want to start with something CK12 has to offer, because anything republished is still customizable in the same quick click customize, change it, and then start changing basically at whatever level you want to work with. So hopefully having access to both the content CK12 has and the user content means that you can kind of tailor it from there and kind of meet directly the needs of your students or the district requirements or whatever that looks like. Um, so we had a question at this point in time, you know, we'll stop and ask some questions. I tried to give you like the fastest overview of customizing content, um, but feel free to answer, or sorry, feel free to ask more questions that I can answer at this time. Um, we have one about sharing through AirDrop, and I actually haven't used AirDrop, um, but I do know that anything that you have is a usable um, link. So at this point in time, if you can share a URL to something, you're welcome to just copy the URL from the top here. I could just, you know, right click, copy that URL, and then use that in any kind of thing that I'm working on. Um, so that might be an option for you if that works with AirDrop, but I can definitely look into that and see if I can, you know, find an easy way for you to do that component. I think uh, another question that often comes up is, um, what about people who aren't coming looking for a flexbook, but just want to take an individual lesson, an individual read, and make some customization to that? Um, is that any different from working with the flexbooks? Yeah, so I would say, you know, let's go back to this page on the Pythagorean theorem. I have the option to basically add this to a flexbook, to add it to my library if I just want to like bookmark it and find it later, or I can even customize this read. Um, and so if I do that, I can do the same edits that I would within that book. Um, the only thing that I would be careful of is that book, if this read existed in it already, um, would be linking to the original topic and you know with the original link. And so if you were trying to edit content within a Flexbook, I would definitely do that from the Flexbook and use that little pencil icon to edit that content. Um, and that way you're not kind of editing content that's disconnected from the book as a whole. Um, but if you're not using a Flexbook environment and you just say, I need a lesson for tomorrow and I wanna make some edits, you can go in and you can edit this content. You'll see, you know, there's embedded video that you can change here and I can change, let's take a look, you know, involving the Pythagorean theorem and triangles, if I wanted to say that. You know, anything that I wanted to do there, I could save. And a draft version is kind of edits for myself and once I finalize this, anyone ha who has access to that link will then be able to see the updated version of my content. Um, Okay, it sounds like you gave a couple of important best practices in that section. And, you know, could we just revisit a couple of those real quick to make sure that the users are clear? I think the first one you were talking about um, maybe had to do with having multiple tabs open or perhaps a use case where a couple of teachers um, are both trying to collaborate on the same book. I think this is, this is important information. Why don't you just review that again? Yeah, so I would say, your, your best practice is not to do what I'm doing, which is having five tabs open and editing all at the same time, because none of the work that I was doing is saving in different places because I'm overwriting it if I haven't updated and refreshed that content. Um, so if I'm looking at my library and I am editing a textbook, your best option is to have one clean tab open. I'm gonna actually just close these other ones so that there's no issue there. I'm not looking at this different textbook. Um, whatever this looks like. I have this one basic textbook. I'm gonna click edit and I'm gonna make changes in there. 
and then I'm going to save any changes, and then I'm going to do stuff externally. So if I'm browsing CK12, or if there's different people trying to edit, anytime I switch from editing within that textbook, save your textbook and move on to that new action without opening multiple tabs. Um, the other thing is that if I have content that I'm editing within a textbook, the best way to edit it is to edit it is directly from the textbook itself, not separately. So the only reason I would edit a read separately from editing the book as a whole would be if I was using that outside of the context of a flexbook. So just know that component. And I'm sure this is a lot of information right now for you guys who've never really gotten on to see how our flex books work. But I think as you're working with it, you just might remember of, oh yes, it's better not to, you know, have a bunch of tabs open, work with it from the flex book. And then I think, I think a lot of this will make sense to you and um, everything will get saved properly. Do you feel like we're ready to move on to the next section? Yeah, thanks. Um, and I think, you know, if you guys have questions now or later, like, please continue to ask them. Um, we're happy to answer them. And if there's something that, you know, is external to CK12 and we don't know right off the top of our heads, we'll definitely look into that and try to get you an answer as soon as possible. Great. Yeah, keep the questions coming. Um, we're going to move on to the last section of our webinar um, before we field more questions from you, which is on assignments. To make an assignment, you're going to want to set up groups to share content and to track progress. CK12 offers an adaptive practice system that can be customized to create quizzes. And we offer easy integration with many common learning management systems, such as Canvas, Schoology, Edmodo, Google Classroom, and more. So I'll give it back to Katie to let her tell you all about this. Great, thanks so much. Um, so we're gonna you know, switch over from here and we're gonna open up an assessment component. So let me share my screen to make that happen. And we're gonna pull this up right here. So if we wanted to go through and we wanted to look at what our assessment looks like, um, there's kind of a couple of different ways that you can assign. And I wanna talk about assignments even more than just assessment. Um, so the first thing is that if you're doing all of your assignments within CK12, you'd be wanting to use the groups feature. And so you can click on groups, and I have some groups in here already, so you'll see those in there. But you can create two different types of groups. So for assignments, you're going to want to create a class group where you share resources and you assign practice or other resources. And then a study group would be great if you're working with colleagues. So I can create that group. So demo for October. And then within that group, you'll see a couple of options for a Q&A discussion, for assigning different resources and reports. So there's no students in here at this point in time. It's just kind of that starting process. So let's look at a different group that actually has content in there. And if I was going to do this, I could see that I've made a number of assignments. I you know, could assign work. These ones have been assigned to my class and other ones were for other classes that I could choose to assign. Um, and I can even see the reports all the way down to the level of kind of the content for any student. So that's your groups option and that's within CK12. And if I was gonna go into another component, so let's say I pulled up a different page. So if I went back to CK12, and I went into the Pythagorean theorem that I was looking at, um, or just any topic, let's pick a different one. So let's say arithmetic um, and whole number addition, and I picked up a read. I could share that to groups, okay? And that would share to any group that I have. So I could share a resource that way. Um, and then you'd see it show up within your groups feature. Now, one thing you should know, your dashboard is actually changing very, very soon at CK12, and that's another way you can access your groups. So I'm not going to click on the current dashboard. I'm actually going to go over to what our dashboard is going to look like really soon. Um, and that includes kind of some trending content based on the subjects I've picked, and then some groups that I might have included, and I could find my content that way. And this is like the new demo for that groups feature. So know that is coming up. Nothing to worry about right now, but that will you'll see that change pretty soon. Um, and so just keep that in mind if you're looking at your groups option. Um, 
it looks like we have a question. How do you add students email username? So if I'm in this group, actually, let's go to the one that we just pulled up. Uh, that's a great question. So you have a couple of options. So you can um, add students to here by inviting them by email or creating accounts for them. This is especially useful if you have students under 13 who might not have their own email. Um, excuse me. And so you can add them to that component. If you have a whole school or district that's trying to upload, definitely let us know. Um, and we'll help you through that process. So hopefully that answers that question. <coughs> excuse me. Um, so if you're looking at our groups option, then we um, can move over to assigning modalities. So Katie needs a second here. She's, <laughs> you've been talking a lot today. Take, take us through the water. Yeah. <laughs> Pardon me. Um, so as we go through, you know, this is a practice piece that is in ecosystems. Let's say I was teaching that. And whether I was looking at the read here, so if I went into the ecosystems read, you'll see this little assign to class option at the top. And I can put in instructions, I can pick which classes I want it to go to, and then the date that I want it to be assigned um, or due date for that class. You'll see that across our reads, our um, assessment, our videos, and then for our plicks and sims, let's just have this one load for a second. And you'll see that assigned a class feature at the top right. So just know those are kind of the two places you might see that occur. Now, I can, in addition to assigning to class, um, I could actually click, oh, I could click on that within the plicks um, up in the top and I could share um, via email or share to a group. I could um, kind of go different places. For most of our content, you'll also see on the left side, so if we go back to this read, that option to share to groups. And by sharing to groups, I can pick the group that I want it to be shared in. And that means it's gonna show up as a resource in that group, but I haven't assigned it to cl that class. And so that's something really important to kind of make that distinction that you're sharing versus assigning the content. Um, so if I go through, Let's talk about practice, because that's probably the biggest thing that people would want to assign. So I can go into my assessments, or I can just click on this preview option for the practice, and it will bring me to that practice page. I can assign it to my class, or I can even preview that content and see what's happening. And let's talk about the difference between our adaptive practice system and a quiz that I might make specifically. So our adaptive practice system, let's say I'm a student and I start typing in random things that might make sense, but I'm just guessing. You know, I could have a scratch pad that might tell me, I could write some notes on, um, that one worked. But this little meter at the top, if I just start typing in nonsense, will start kind of making a red flashing thing. And over time, it's gonna actually start to make suggestions for a student. So let's see if it pops up. It's thinking, and you'll see here, you know, the reads, the videos, the applications, kind of different pieces that a student might want to review if they're struggling with that concept. Alternatively, if they were doing well, it would bump them to available harder questions. Now let's say I submit this. This is the same basic report. And we're gonna do another webinar uh, specifically on assessment because there's so many different components here. Um, but this is just kind of that quick overview where I can see the responses, I can see the exact problems they did, kind of how many easy, medium, or hard questions they got. Um, and if I go back for a second, I could, instead of giving them that adaptive practice component, I could customize this practice in what CK12 calls a quiz. And I can do that from a specific practice already there, or I could do it from my library by clicking a new, um, creating a new modality that happens to be a quiz. And in here, I can change the number of questions, make it less or more. I could, that's fine. I could actually edit the questions themselves. So if I go in, I could pick which questions I wanted so that I got some true, false, multiple choice. I could reorder them, just like most of the stuff on our site. 
and I can actually add my own questions. But we have almost 150,000 math, science, and a few spelling questions in our system. So there is no need for you to use this practice tool in order to have assessment for your students. Um, so I'm just going to go back for a second because I don't actually want to take the time to create that. But these are options. Really know that kind of the basics of CK12, you could just use any resource on our site as is. You could quickly customize it for a second. Or you could actually, if you wanted to, you know, spend a ton of time and make it exactly what you wanted for every single little question, you're welcome to do that. But I can update that quiz and save it. And then I would see that quiz, once I've saved it, within my library if I go there. And now I could assign that particular piece to my students. I could edit it some more or go in and click assign. So that's the difference between our adaptive practice versus our quiz. And, you know, as you saw before, the share option allowed you to share both as an email to, or to social media, or this last one is to Google Classroom. And so this is a great transition into our integration with learning management systems. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up some options. If I did this directly from here, you would see the option because I'm logged in to pick a class and assign that content. But we have other systems that we're also integrated with. Um, okay, so it looks like it didn't pop up that window, but if I click on the Google Classroom piece, that um, it will actually pop up a window that would allow you to kind of share it as an assignment or a different piece. Um, so let's go into a couple other learning management pieces. So I am going to share a different screen with you. Um, and if I'm on CK12, we talked about Google Classroom. That's really a share feature. You're just sharing that resource. You're not assigning that within there. Um, so if you wanna track reports on student progress, make sure that you assign that practice within a CK12 group. For both Canvas, you know, where you can add CK12 as an external tool. So I could go down here, find a piece, um, and add that component as an assignment. And now our newest one is Schoology. Um, where I can add different materials and assignments within there. Those are fully integrated where I could assign reads, I could assign videos, um, either CK12 ones or ones that are in my library. Um, and you'd see the practice within there because you're creating a full assignment where we pass the grade back to them. Um, Edmodo is similar in that way, in that if I went into Spotlight and I assign one of our CK12 groups and I kind of search for CK12, the practice, I could assign practice and the grades would be recorded in Edmodo if you're using that. Um, so none of these are necessary to use CK12. Um, you can use all of our features within CK12 itself, but these are options. If your school is already using Canvas or Google Classroom or Edmodo or something like that, then feel free to look at that integration more. Um, if I went to the, any page on CK12 and scrolled down to the bottom to where you see tools and apps, that will take me to a page that includes content on how we're integrated with some of these different systems. One other note, something like Clever um, and Classlink have single sign-on options, which are integrated with CK12, so you can use those piece. And at the top of this page are a couple of our personal apps that I want to go through right now. The first is our practice app. So students who download the practice app can do their homework on their phone, on the bus, on the way to a game, whatever that looks like. Um, and that directly sends the information back into the group where you've assigned it. Um, the other option is our Flexbook and our Physics Sims apps, which I just want to mention while we're here, because those allow you to download our content into them and access them offline if students don't or you don't have access kind of in different places. So those are definitely some options that you might want to look at as you move forward from there. Katie, while we're waiting for um, some more people to ask questions, now's a great time to type in some questions into the Q&A if you have not already had a chance to get your questions addressed. Um, maybe we can show them a couple of other helpful things. Uh, we do have a help desk. So when they start playing around and they've forgotten a lot of what we've covered today, um, let's show them the help desk. And then I also want to make sure that we reference our Jumpstart program. Yeah. So on any kind of our, of our main pages on CK12, at the top here, you'll see a help option. And if I click on that help option, it opens up our help desk. 
And most of you guys, I'm assuming, are educators, so you'd click on there. And you can see all of these quick little articles that tell you how to use our groups, look at customization, practices and quizzes. And if that doesn't answer your question, you're always welcome to send us an email um, or contact us you know, at CK12. But that's, that's a great place to go for. The email is also just support at ck12.org, so you could email them directly. Um, so that's one option. And then if we go back here to CK12 and we go to our homepage, you'll see right now on the teacher version of the homepage, our Jumpstart curriculum. And you can find that from there or you can just type in Jumpstart from any of our search bars and click on that Jumpstart link. And that will take you to the six week program that we ran this summer. This is a lot of information for kind of one quick overview. Um, and so this is a great place to go in and say, okay, well, we talked about getting started and organizing and customizing content and some of that assessment, but we didn't go into a lot of the special formatting um, or kind of those more of the interactives and different pieces. So this might be a great place for you to look at a longer webinar. Um, you can also join, sorry, if you scroll down here, you can join the conversation in our forum and ask questions there. So lots of different places to work with um, that might help give you more information in addition to kind of what we're gonna continue to do throughout this year. Um, but so that's a piece. I know we had one question um, that it looks like we've taken care of in there. So um, we are, I think good with questions for right now. I don't know, Lindsay, if you have anything else that's come in since I last looked at that. Yeah, I think at, at this time, um, I'm gonna go back to sharing my screen and um, I wanna make sure that you know of our next um, webinars that are coming up. Because exactly like Katie was saying, there's all kinds of places where you can get additional information um, about how to use our site. And we're definitely gonna go into a lot more detail about the adaptive practice system on um, our next webinar, which is scheduled for um, November 10th. And then we'll be doing an Everything CK12 webinar. Again, if you need a refresher, if you wanna refer your colleagues to sign up for webinars. And our webinars page is at www.ck12.org slash webinars if you want to um, see not only what's coming up and what's featured, but also an archive of the webinars. And we will, um, after this webinar is over in the next couple of days, we will get that uploaded so that this could be on demand as well. Again, if you're wanting to, to share this information or to revisit it. Um, before we fully wrap up here, um, we do want to encourage you to answer a short questionnaire for us, uh, totally optional, but we would love to get your feedback on the content and presentation of today's webinar. Um, we're always looking to improve your experience and to make sure that we answer all of the relevant questions and really tailor these webinars to your needs. So there's a link on the screen here. You can't click on it, obviously, but um, I think we're going to blast it out in the chat window, and then we'll also uh, be emailing it out to you in the coming days um, to make sure it's a really short questionnaire um, that hopefully you can uh, help us out and answer a few questions there. Um, support at ck12.org is the best place to email. We've got a great support team here. And if you send something to support ck12.org, um, our whole team will, will circle it and we'll make sure that you get your answers um, in a very quick time frame. Um, also, we wanna encourage you, you can follow us on social media um, at CK12 Foundation, at your at the usual suspects here. Um, make sure that you um, reach out to us there and uh, share your participation in this webinar. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the programming, but we will stay online as long as there are questions. So please, please, please um, ask your questions. If you're ready to sign off, go ahead and then um, take off, but we're gonna, we're gonna stay on and see if there are any questions for us. Thanks for joining us today. Great, thanks, Lindsay. Um, we, as she said, I'll stay on for a few more minutes and see what other pieces we might be able to answer. Um, but if we don't get any, then hopefully this is a great place to start. And you've seen kind of from the simple option all the way through to um, kind of a glimpse of what you might be able to do if you wanted to pour in a lot of time and effort to customize it specifically to what you're looking for. But knowing teachers I've worked with, um, most of you guys are passionate enough to put in all of that time and effort. So I wanted to at least give you the option to see what existed and what you might be able to do. Um, 
So we'll give it about another minute. And if no one else has questions, we will sign off from there. Well, it looks like people are signing off. So um, I think we will as well. Feel free to post on the Jumpstart forum or email support if you have further questions. Oh, we got one last one. Do you know when your reports feature will be updated? Um, the dashboard is being updated, I think, <laughs> almost imminently. Um, and so that component will go through at that point in time. The reports feature, I think it depends on the component. Um, but I can, if you shoot an email to support at ck12.org with your specifics or post on Jumpstart, we can get back to you um, or I can email you directly with the exact time frame on what we're looking for for an updated reports feature. Um, but I know that there have been a number of requests with different levels of changes for the reports feature. Um, and so I think those would be coming out at different points in time based on what you're specifically looking for. Okay, wonderful. Well, with that, we're gonna sign off. Um, and yeah, just continue to shoot us emails or post and let us know and hopefully you'll join us in November if you're interested in learning more specifically about assessment because um, that will be our next webinar. Okay, thanks so much.